Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make chevrol salt. To do this experiment you're going to need goggles, gloves, some beakers, both glass and plastic, you're going to need a lab scale, sodium metabisulfide, and copper sulfate. You want to make your copper sulfate solution first and to do this it's going to take about 7.25 grams of copper sulfate and 75.43 grams of water. Now the reason you want to make your copper sulfate solution first is copper sulfate takes quite a long time to dissolve. Next you're going to want to measure out 6.14 grams of sodium metabisulfide. To this you're going to add about 32 grams of water and give both solutions a long time to dissolve. You can increase the rate at which these solids dissolve by stirring the solutions or using very hot water when you add them but because I was using plastic cups, I didn't want to use too hot of water and risk melting the cups. So I'm just going to stir these and give them a long time to sit. The next step is to transfer the solutions to glass beakers, both to give a more dramatic effect and because later on we will need to heat the solution. You should be able to see a nice green color form as the sodium metabisulfide is added to the copper sulfate. And this is typically indicative of a copper 2 plus molecule being formed. Now that most of the copper sulfate has reacted, I'm going to go ahead and continue the reaction by adding the rest of the sodium metabisulfide solution to the copper sulfate. You can see that this shifts from a light green to a very dark green. The next step is for visual use only. I'm going to decant a small amount of the solution into a 50 ml beaker. For the next step, we are going to heat our solution. Now, remember that you're working with a sulfide solution, meaning it's going to be putting off a lot of gas, really bad smelling stuff. So again, work in a very open, well-ventilated area. You'll notice that in the video, I heat in a circular pattern. This reduces the chance of the glass shattering from thermal shock and allows a much more even boil, meaning that it won't splash out. After about 15 to 20 minutes of low heating, you can see that most of the solution has taken on this dark red to brown color. This is our chevrel salt. I now have our gravity filtration set up with just a typical coffee filter, and you can see that the liquid I'm pouring off has a little bit of a green tinge to it. This is a sign that maybe we didn't get all the chevrel salt out of it, and I'm going to allow this waste container to evaporate over time and see if any more actually comes out of it. I'm going to wash the solid with just a little bit more deionized water and see if we can't get all of it out of the beaker. It's been about a week and all the powder has had plenty of time to dry. What I've done is I put it into this beaker to make it a little bit easier to pour into our dram vial. I've actually poured a little bit of our original solution into this evaporation dish. As you can see, there's a lot of salt left behind from this reaction, which tells me that the reaction probably didn't go to completion, meaning that for this reaction to happen, or at least to get the most yield out of it, it will be preferential to use some sort of heat. However, if you don't have a heat source, this is completely possible to do Without one, it just takes much longer and you get a much lower yield. Now what I'm going to do is just try to wash some of this salt away and because chevrel salt is insoluble in deionized water, I can wash away the other reagents and I have relatively high purity. It took about two or three washings to get all of the unreacted reagents out of the recrystallization dish until I realized that I was dumping small amounts of chevrol salt into the beaker. So I just decided to dump the entire thing in and decant off the aqueous layer. After this batch of chevrol salt was dried, I decided to put it in this little vial and show it off. Chevrol salt has a very unique color. It is brick red, which is very uncommon for copper salts considering their electron configuration. 
Chevrolet Salt is specifically cool because it contains both Copper 1 and Copper 2, which is quite uncommon from a single reaction. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you liked the video, be sure to let me know down in the comments below, because I love to hear from you guys. And if you haven't seen last week's video on my new lab that I'm going to be moving into soon, be sure to check that one out because there's a contest going on right now to name my new laboratory. So please, if you want to name the lab, go ahead and go comment on that video as well. And until next time, have a great day.